Now, I want to cover a lot of new things that we haven't talked about before, plus give you a recap of some features that are common to both our Marantz products as well as our Denon products. So before we get started with that, let's talk first about the models that we are introducing. We're introducing four new Marantz SR series receivers this year. So as you can see, as you move up the lineup, you get more channels of amplification, which we've talked about. You also get more channels of processing. All of these receivers are also HDMI 2.1. Um, they have the, the ability to pass 8K, 6D, and 4K, 120. They all have the ability to do um, HD and 4K upscaling to 8K. You can also, um, and as you move up the lineup, you get more ins and outs. Um, the, the, um, as you move up, the larger units have eight HDMI ins and three HDMI outs. Um, there is one 40 gig HDMI input and two 40 gigabit per second HDMI outputs, as well as a 4K zone two. That's how we get three outs. There's this new specification. We talk about this in hyper detail. Um, uh, we do 90 minutes or multiple, we do multiple sessions on just HDMI. But basically, there, the goal was to give you better audio performance, better video performance, better, better gaming experience, and a better user experience. But the thing that required a whole new specification, ultra high speed, was the bandwidth requirements of video. 8K frames are four times the data. Each frame, each frame of picture is four times bigger than that of a 4K um, video. So bigger file size. And if you show more frames, like 120 frames per second, that requires more data, more bandwidth. Those are the reasons why we need a new specification. There's tons of other things that do that come with 2.1 that do not require more bandwidth uh, or that much more bandwidth, but the, it's the video that required the new specification. And we know that there's actually um, systems that are out there that they say are going to support this, these higher capabilities, including the new upcoming Xbox, as well as the upcoming PlayStation 5, which I am a big time Sony PlayStation guy. Now, these both of these consoles can support 8K60 and, uh, and 4K 120. And we've noticed a couple of things. Number one, the gamers seem to be more interested in the higher frame rate than the resolution. Higher frame rate gives you smoother, sharper objects in motion. And if I'm playing a sports game or a first person shooter game or some sort of game where I need the action needs to be crisper, um, that gives me a bigger advantage than more resolution. So I'd rather have 4K really crisp than 8K with a blur in it. So gamers are, are more gravitating towards the higher frame rates. The next thing is just because these systems can do 8K, one, um, 8K 60 and 4K 120 does not mean the game developers are going to develop the games utilizing those frame rates and those resolutions. That is because um, there's some other things besides drawing the frame. It's called ray tracing. How, how detailed is the object? How well are the shadows rendered? And things like that that really make an object more, more lifelike and realistic. The game, the game developers have the option of doing high resolution, using that power for more resolution, using that power for more frame rate, or using that power to draw more realistic pictures um, with better ray tracing and things like that. Many of the gaming systems are going to probably go towards the ray tracing. So you may only still see 4K60, but that 4K60 content will look absolutely amazing. So, but right now, the only things that are really good that uh, could possibly utilize the bandwidth requirements of HDMI 2.1 are gaming systems. So if you're a gamer or you're interested in being a gamer, um, that is right now the main reason why you would do it. To play back 8K60 and 4K 120, the, the, the capabilities of the HDMI has been raised to a maximum of 48 gigabits per second. So you do not need 48 gigabits per second to play back 8K60 or 4K 120 on a modern TV. I will repeat that. You do not need 48 gigabits per second to play back 8K60 or 4K 120 on a modern consumer television set. Consumer TVs, all, and the consumer projectors, all utilize 
Now I'll say 99.9%. I think there may be one projector, but it's not an 8K projector. All 8K or 4K 120 devices that you can buy utilize a 10-bit panel. To get the maximum performance from a 10-bit panel at 8K60 or 4K 120, the maximum that is required to get the maximum out of that TV or that projector is going to be 40. 48 is there just for the future. So maybe when you have a flying car and you go to buy your TV with a 12-bit panel in the year 2047, you know, you'll be able to utilize um, all 48 gigabits per second. So 40 is the actual speed limit uh, that you really need, but the system can't support up to 48. There's a whole bunch of videos on HDMI 2.1 where I cover that in hyper detail. Please, if you haven't, subscribe. Watch that video on 2.1 and those videos on 2.1 and your level of knowledge will far exceed most of the other people you talk to in the industry when it comes to 2.1. So, but we, but so please check that out. Now, the reason why I bring this up and I want to talk about this a little bit more today um, is there's some additional settings built into the receiver based on this new requirement for bandwidth. So. Right now, the bandwidth requirements for HDMI 2.0B has a maximum speed limit of 18, 18 gigabits per second. And that supports 4K at 60p HDR. That is what's found on a 4K UHD Blu-ray or an Apple TV or any other um, streaming or any other 4K HDR sources that are available today. 18 is the maximum and it uses uh, basically, think of an HDMI cable as a highway. In order to pass 18 gigabits per second, there are three lanes of trap or three lanes um, in this HDMI cable. It's actually 19 wires. Three of the wires or three sets of the wires are used to pass video. And currently, so each lane passes six gigabits per second. So six plus six plus six equals 18. In HDMI 2.1, um, there's still the same amount of cable wires in the cable, but now they're using four sets of those cables, four of those cables to drive the video. And each of the four theoretically can support 12 gigabits per second. Now, this could lead to issues because if I have an older device, an Oppo Blu-ray player, a Kaleidoscape, an Apple TV, a 4K Roku, a current PlayStation 4, a current Xbox One X, you name it, an older DVD player. All of those communicate through the HDMI cable using three lanes. But all of a sudden, HDMI um, 2.1 has four lanes. And the receiver can pass either three lanes or it can pass either four lanes. How does the receiver know which one to do? And so there are settings in the receiver that I want to show you. If I go here to video... You'll see that there's a whole lot of um, settings and stuff on this receiver. And the one that I want to point out is this one called 8K Signal Format. Um, before, it, you had a difference between standard and enhanced. Standard was designed to play back on an older Blu-ray player or DVD player. And then because uh, to make sure that it was back, the receiver was backwards compatible. And the receiver was defaulted to standard out of the box. When I bought an Apple TV or 4K Roku to, or 4K game system, um, HDR game system like a PlayStation 4, in order to support 4K 60 HDR, I would have to physically go in and change the receiver to enhanced. And that would tell the receiver that it could pass 18 gigabits per second. But you used to have to manually change it. This year, the receiver is defaulted to enhanced which means out of the box, it works perf It works at its maximum performance for any current um, 4K 60p HDR device. 18 gigabits per second can pass through the receiver. If I find myself with an older source and that older, and all those older devices or my TV cannot handle that type of bandwidth, I can go in here and set it back to standard, but out of the box, it's set to enhanced. But even enhanced, it is only three 
lanes of traffic. If I get an 8K or 4K 120 TV and I have an 8K or 4K 120 source, I will need to change this to 8K enhanced, okay? So it will give you a reminder not to change this unless your devices can support this higher frame rate, all right? Um, because um, if I change it, I'm trying to use the receivers looking for four lanes of traffic and TV may only support three lanes. So it reminds you that if your TV is not configured to support 8K60 or 4K 120, are you sure you want to switch this? Do not switch this unless your TV supports 8K60 or 4K 120. When I said switch this to 8K Enhance, everything is going to come in, even whether it's three lanes or not, it's going to go out four. And if your TV can't support four, you get no picture. All right. So do not turn this on. People like to see these new settings and turn them up to maximum because they can. And what's going to be happening is you're going to end up with a blank screen. So don't turn that on unless you actually have a, um, a actual 8K um, or 4K 120 display. Of course, our receivers also still have our HDMI diagnostics tool that um, we um, normally don't show with show to customers, but only it's normally used for troubleshooting by CI teams and they can help you with this. But this allows you to test the capabilities of your cables um, and to, to see if they can support up to 40 gigabits per second, which is the maximum that you can get from a TV with a 10 bit panel. The next thing is we have that HDMI diagnostics tool and you can go in and, and a lot of times you would go in and use it to test cables or you would go in and do what's called HD, HDCP limiting. As the resolution increases, there are different levels of copy protection that is added to the content. The receiver comes out of the box, every single input set to auto. The newest version of HDCP is 2.3. Basically, it says I have the rights as a receiver to pass anything that you give me up to four, um, 8K, um, 8K60 and 4K 120. I am authorized to pass anything all the way up to there. All right. If I have a lower number, um, the unit is authorized to send something um, lower resolutions. So if I go here, I have the difference between auto 2.3 and 1.4. What 1.4 is for is, as I mentioned, say you have an older um, DVD player or an older PlayStation, maybe a PlayStation 2. That has 1.4 on it. And sometimes um, there's a problem with communication about what the, um, the device is authorized to send. So I can go in and I can limit the HDCP for that input. So the um, so it will only send that lower resolution. A lot of times it has to do with the TV. Um, the TV is only a 1.4 TV, so I can go in and I can limit the edit to tell my brand new PlayStation 5 that my TV is only an HD TV and it will only send it HD content and you always have a picture. So if so, you if you have problems basically with video and sometimes the video does not play, you can go in here and limit the HDCP of the information being sent to your TV so the video will pass. So that is a new for this year as well. Uh, Vamsi has a question for you. If mm -hmm. I have a TV with 4K 60 frames per second, if I buy these new AVRs and set the 4K slash 8K enhanced, will there be any difference or will it stay the same? It will stay the same. When I put it in standard, it, set, it will only send a maximum of 10 gigabits per second um, through the receiver or the TV can only accept that much, which is 4K at 30 frames per second. If I set it to enhanced, I can support um, 4K 60 HDR um, signals going through the receiver and the TV can accept that 4K 60 HDR at 18 gigabits per second. If I set that sucker to 8K enhanced, I, um, I have the capability of not sending 18 gigabits per second, but 40 gigabits per second. And you're, um, and that seems really cool on that receiver, but your 4K60 TV can't accept that. It won't know what to do with that. 
it looks at the HDMI cable completely different than what the information that's coming from the receiver and you will get no picture. So leave it in enhance. It's defaulted for the perfect setting for anybody that has a 4K HDR TV or projector. Don't touch it. If you have a if you don't have an HDR TV, set it to standard. If you have an 8K TV or a 4K 120 TV, set it to 8K enhanced. As I mentioned before, there are more features when it comes to 2.1 and um, um, beyond 8K and high frame rate, there's still a reason to buy 2.1. There's a variety of different features. We talked about these before in our 8K sessions, and I mean in our HDMI 2.1 sessions, there's lots of features that enhance gaming. Variable refresh rate, computer and TV communicate with each other, and the TV's frame rate or refresh rate slows, slows down and speeds up based on how fast the computer or game system can draw the next frame. So if it can draw a simple, if the frame is simple and the computer can draw it really quickly, the frame rate on your TV will increase. If it's a very complex um, image and the computer takes more time to draw it, the frame rate on your TV will slow down or reduce. And this is done second by second based on a communication between the game system or graphics card in your computer and your TV. Quick, tra quick frame transport, as soon as the frame is drawn by the computer system, it can be sent off to the TV. And the, the analogy I use here is, I say I'm working on an assembly line, and when I finish something, I have to wait for a bucket that's going down the assembly line for me to put my new, pro my new thing in the bucket. And then I build another one, and I have to wait for the next bucket. And then when the bucket comes, I put it in. And no matter how fast I go, I have to wait for the next bucket to come to put the content in. Uh, quick frame transport, those buckets, they took them off the HDMI conveyor belt. And all it is is just a conveyor belt. So as fast as I build something, I can put it on the conveyor belt. So basically, as soon as the computer finishes drawing something, it immediately sends it off to the TV, which reduces the amount of lag and makes it more responsive for gaming. The next one, auto latency mode. All of our receivers for the last four or five years have had a game mode built in. Most TVs have a game mode built in, but before you used to have to manually go in and when you're playing a game, set the TV to game mode and the receiver to game mode. Now I'm playing on a PlayStation and I'm watching Netflix. All of the video enhancements are on, on the TV and in the receiver. The second I switch to a game, the, the game system will tell the receiver and the TV to switch to game mode automatically. So you get optimized gaming and optimized video without you having to do anything. When we look at movies and video, for those people who are just who are not gamers, you get dynamic HDR, quick media switching, and uh, audio and, and enhanced audio return channel. First, let's talk about quick media switching. Quick media switching, we've all is um, a lot of times the menu system is at 60 frames per second on a Roku or Apple TV or maybe even your Blu-ray player. And when you start the movie, the movie may be in 24 frames per second. What, a lot of times when you used to switch all the time previously, when you switch from one frame rate, 60 or 30, to another frame rate, 24, you would get a blank screen as the receiver and as all of the components verified that they were authorized to share it, to play back the information. That goes away. So when you go from the menu to the movie, the picture is instantaneous. You don't get that blank screen. Dynamic HDR, people ask, there's multiple ways that you can do HDR metadata dynamically. There is dynamic HDR, Dolby Vision, and HDR10+. Plus. All three of those are dynamic HDR formats. So think of it this way. Um, think of them like soda, like soda, like cola. Dolby Vision is Coca-Cola. Um, a, um, HDR 10 plus is Pepsi and dynamic HDR is that white can with cola written along the side. So they're all colas. They're all sodas. It's just three different recipes to approach the same thing. So you have dynamic HDR, cola, Dolby Vision, Coca-Cola, and HDR 10 plus Pepsi-Cola. A lot of times you'll see TVs this year that will support dynamic HDR plus either Coke or Pepsi. 
a lot of times you will not see both dynamic HDR. I mean, you will not see Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus on the same TV because one is Coke and one is Pepsi and they don't really like each other. But you will see dynamic HDR, which is a generic version, as well as one of the other two formats on many of the TVs. If we don't care. We support all three. So if you have a TV that supports all three, we will pass all three. The last thing, of course, is um, audio enha enhanced audio return channel. We talked about this. If you want to run surround sound from your TV's internal applications, you need to use either ARC or eARC. The difference between ARC and eARC is ARC will do multi-channel surround as well as Dolby Atmos, but it's compressed. eARC will do uncompressed multi-channel Atmos and DTSX Pro and IMAX Enhanced. It is all uncompressed, the same quality coming back from your TV to your receiver as if you had plugged a Blu-ray player into the receiver directly. You do need a better cable um, to utilize eARC. And one other benefit of eARC besides um, uh, better sound is it also has automatic lip sync correction. ARC supports, I think, one megabit per second of audio and eARC supports 37 megabits per second. There's 37 times more audio data can be sent down eARC compared to ARC. So you want to use it. And when it comes to a lot of us, this is what's this is important. Sometimes you may many customers may actually plug the game system directly into the TV to take advantage of all of the um, functionality that because a lot of the functionality of 2.1 is video based. Variable refresh rate, quick media switching, quick frame transport, auto latency mode, all that stuff is about video. You plug it into the TV, those you get all of those benefits, and then you can send back the audio via eARC. If we, the reason why we have an HDMI input is say someone has um, another a, um, an 8K device that they want to share with both a TV and a projector, then you, would, you may possibly plug that into the receiver. I don't recommend it. You can because it makes, we're gonna talk about HDMI cables and you'll see why it's much, 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 much cheaper for you to plug it into the TV directly than run it through the receiver if you, at any time you possibly can. You'll save hundreds of dollars if you do that, all right? So you could utilize that. The next thing is for those movie people out there, most of the, there are no external 8K sources. Most of the 8K content you're gonna be seeing for the next few years, um, when it comes to video, we'll probably be sponsored by TV manufacturers and ran by internal apps built into the TV. So you're going to probably have to feed that. You need to feed that audio from that TV's internal app to your um, your older receiver or your newer receiver, um, Denon or Marantz, via eARC. So this is important. Moving on, this is the back of this of a SR8015, I love the way the copper looks, by the way. I mean, even the screws are copper plated. Come on, you know. So, um, and as you can see, there's a lot of NZs and outsies um, here. Lots of HDMI inputs um, and lots of speaker terminals. There are 15 speaker terminals on the back of this receiver. And that is because you can connect this thing a variety of different ways. For example, if I run it in 13 channel mode and I want the preamp to run the, um, the, the front mains, I am going to connect it differently to different terminals than if I want the preamp to run the surround channels. So I have to have 13 terminals on here, even though there's only 11 channels amplification to ensure that I have the proper connections. Now, the cool thing about this is if I go in here and you go, well, which one should I use? If I go into speakers and I go into manual setup and I go and we're an amplifier assigned and say I go to um, back to 13 channels here and I want this, the fronts, the preamp to be on the front for the front. If I go here and hit view speaker terminals, um, it'll tell me um, which ones to connect and which ones I shouldn't connect. So, so that is kind of a cool thing. All right. So there's more terminals on the back because there's um, there's a variety of different combinations that you can actually use. On the receiver, it has as you move up the lineup, like you said, there's you get more HDMI inputs. Um, so as you move up to the top ones, the 8013, the 7013, and an upgraded AV8805, there will be eight inputs and three outputs. One 
of the inputs will support 8K at 40 gigabits per second, and two, and the two monitor outs will support it. There is also a zone two 4K output. And of course, there is a one HDMI input on the front. Uh, um, while there's only one input that supports 8K at 40 gigabits per second, all of the other inputs support all of the other things that you would that you can utilize: dynamic HDR, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, variable refresh rate, quick media switching, quick frame transport, auto latency mode. All of that stuff is supported on all of the other inputs, and all of those inputs, all of those other seven inputs, can be upscaled from HD and 4K all the way up to 8K. So that is important because the receiver is in between the TV and the source, there's a lot of features at HDMI 2.1 that you have to make sure are turned on on the TV. And a lot of times people forget to turn them on or that TV is not compatible and they believe that it's a problem with the receiver. It is not. So what we did to, to help people troubleshoot and show them that, um, figure out what's going on. If I hit the um, display, the input, the, the information menu, I can see what is being transferred between the source and the TV, um, whether it's Dolby Vision, HOG, what type of HDR it is, what type of frame rate it is, is the frame rate variable, and what HDMI 2.1 features are going on. If you do not see the feature you're looking for, it probably tells you, like say you don't see eARC, it probably tells you that either the TV does not support it or you didn't turn it on on the TV and you didn't turn it on on the particular game system or device, source device. So this will help you troubleshoot. Here is the back of the receivers. Like I said, if you look at the HDMIs, there's one in and two outs, as well as a zone two out. We get asked a lot, why is there only one in? And that is because a lot of times people, like for example, you have a game system, you're probably gonna plug it directly into your TV because you want the game system right next to the TV. So most customers are gonna be using plugging their, their 2.1 devices directly into the TV. So say I wanna switch my system right now. And I go, man, I really wanna plug the game system in over there. The first thing I'd have to do if I really care about 2.1 is I'd have to sell my 75Z9 and buy another $6,000 television set, all right? And I can plug the game system directly into the TV over here and, buy, and use a $30 cable. If I plug it in in the rack, I got to use the $30, $30 cable, US, to plug the game system into the receiver and a $1,000 cable to run it from the TV, from the receiver to the TV. So if you plug your game systems into your TVs, you can use the shortest cables possible, which will reduce the cost of you plugging the game system in. If I plug it into the receiver, I got to buy twice as many new cables and when the cables get past three meters they cost hundreds of dollars hundreds so i'm going to plug my game system if i get a new tv directly into that television set and spend 30 bucks what the input is for is say i have a i go out and eventually buy myself a brand new projector and i have a projector and a tv and i need to split a signal a movie signal between two devices. It's going to be a long, 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 long time before there's going to be enough devices out there that you're going to need um, for to, to send to a movie, to send to, uh, movie devices that you're going to need to send to both a TV and a projector. Now, one more thing I want to cover is we know that there is an upgrade path for a, a Denon X8500 as well as the AV8805. That is coming. We haven't still, it should happen. We should be doing that by the end of the year. You send the receiver off, it will be serviced in the US by our service department, our service team in New York. Each region you need to check and determine where they're going to do it in your country. And then they will send it back to you. And it will have all the functionality that is will be found in the upcoming X8500 AHA and the AV8805A. When you see A at the end of these models, that tells you that the HDMI 2.1 board is built into it. If you send your unit off, it will come back with the same capabilities as the new unit you'll be able to buy that has the board built in. So that is coming soon. A few more things. 
Um, we could talk forever about these products, but but besides all the things we've talked about, they've even did further things to enhance the performance of these of the higher end models. So let's look at just one or two things when it's the eight when on the 8015. The first thing is it utilizes the same processor that is built into the AV8805. Oh, by the way, this processor is also used in the X8500 Denon and the X6700 Denon. It's a Griffin Lite dual core Shark DSP. Basically, in order to support DTSX Pro and 13 channels of processing, you need a bigger brain. And this is the reason why on the 8015, you can support 13 channels of surround like you can with an AV8805 because it has the same brain. And of course, it, this brain is also found in the X8500 as well as the other receiver that can play back that has 13 channel processing, which is the X6700. If you look at the back of the 8015, it still has, just like the 8012, it still has 11 channels of amplification, but you have 13 pre-outs and you have, and it has 13 channels of processing. The next thing is the, um, they continue to evolve the sound quality. They developed new HDAMs for the 8015, hyperdynamic amplifier modules. And the goal was to give you um, more output, cleaner output with lower distortion for a higher quality sound. And the sound master basically says, the benefit to you is you're gonna get better signal to root noise. It's gonna be clearer, wider soundstage, deeper bass. So better components. Even though uh, the, the 8012 is, was an amazing sounding receiver, these sound managers are never satisfied and they continue to advance the performance. I think it's cool to have the 8K capability, but it's not what's gonna motivate me to even do the upgrade on my AV805. I have a 75 Sony Z9. I love that TV, not getting rid of it. I have a Sony VW995 projector. Love that projector. I am not getting rid of it. So until I decide I want to make a $30,000 or $40,000 investment to switch both of my video displays, my motivation to upgrade or buy another AVR is not there. But I do like um, all of the other features, and I want that that I, that would motivate me to buy to um, to upgrade in the future. And that would be maybe something like the surround sound mode in the main room, why I pay stereo in the second zone, the stuff that is found on this receiver. So a lot of the stuff that's gonna make you wanna purchase this receiver have nothing to do with the capabilities of 8K or 4K. In fact, most of the logos that we're highlighting, except for the one way at the bottom um, that talks about 8K, it's about the audio performance and the user performance capabilities and advantages of buying this receiver. Even if you're not into 8K or 4K 120, there is a benefit to buying um, one of these new AVRs. So thank you guys very much for attending um, this week's session. And um, hopefully you've gotten some, you've learned something new because we talk all the time. And each time, if you can just grab a little bit more information or of a little snippet that tells you, tells us that it's worth our time. So thanks again, and we shall talk to you soon.